Today's video, we're going to do a little question and answer session. I did a video recently on moving from California to Utah. It was actually a Zoom meeting with an agent in LA. I got a lot of questions from that particular video, so I've put those questions together and I will share it in a video. Let's get to it right now. And I'm Mike Gallagher. If you want to learn everything about living in Utah, eating, drinking, sleeping, moving here, you've come to the right channel. Start by hitting that subscribe button down below. Let's become a friend. Also, if you hit that bell notification, you'll be notified every time I release a new video. And that's every week. And I absolutely love the phone calls and emails from all over the world. So if you're even considering buying or selling a home in Utah, call me, text me, send me an email. I got your back when moving to Utah. I recently did a video, it was actually a Zoom video, on moving from California to Utah, and it was hosted by an agent in LA. I got a lot of questions, a lot of reach outs about people who are interested in moving from California to Utah. So I compiled some of the most popular questions that I've been asked during the last few weeks and put it together on this particular video. One of the big questions I got was a recommendation for a Mexican restaurant. So if you're in the Salt Lake Valley, hands down, it's got to be the Red Iguana. They have two locations in Salt Lake City. Don't just take my word for it. The show Diners, Dives, and Drive-Ins with Guy, he also recommends it. He's been there at least once, maybe twice, and it gets his vote of confidence. It's a traditional mom-and-pop business. I absolutely love mom-and-pop stories, history. And if you go to the original location, and I've been fortunate to have a seat at the very back, you feel like you're walking through history. You can see how the business has expanded over the years. Fantastic. Now, if you're up in the Ogden area, give Maria's a try. It's located in South Ogden. Fantastic place. I've got friends that eat there, and we all agree that they do some great food. Either place, you will not be disappointed. Question number two I get, is the front runner safe? First of all, let me explain what the front runner is. It is an above ground train that travels from Ogden to Provo or Provo to Ogden. It's a way a lot of people commute back and forth to work. The train runs at approximately about 70 mile an hour until it hits different stops. I find it very safe. I've taken the train numerous times, had no problems. I have not heard of anybody having any kind of problems with safety on the trains. Now, UTA, which stands for the Utah Transit Authority, they have employees that ride the train as um, chaperones, ushers. Now, UTA also has its own police force that also will ride the train and they also man the stations. So you feel very safe when you're running on the front runner. So question number three I've gotten from a few people. Will Hill Air Force Base close? There's a lot of people moving here for jobs, civilian or military, to Hill Air Force Base. The short answer I would say is no. But let me tell you something I've learned in my lifetime. The most powerful tool the U.S. government has is the ballpoint pen. With one stroke of a signature, they could close a base. They could take away your Social Security. They could take away your health care with that one signature. So anything is possible. What members of Congress and the House do, you know, anything could change. But Hill Air Force Base does have a lot of great things going for it. First of all, they have the F-35 airplane. That is the latest fighter pilot plane that the U.S. military has. So they are investing millions, maybe even billions of dollars, upgrading the personnel and the complexes to house these particular airplanes on the base. It's a lot of construction going on. So there's a lot of money on the base right now. Number two, out in the West Desert, there is an electronic battlefield at where fighter jets go out there and they perform war games. They, a lot of practice exercises. Matter of fact, countries from all over the world will come here to use that particular battlefield. So it's not something that you can just take that battlefield and pick up and move somewhere else. Where do you move it to? That would be my question. So number three would be depot work, maintenance, repair. Hill Air Force Base performs a lot of repairs 
on most of the fleet in the United States Air Force, whether it's tanker planes or fighter jets. They also refurbish jets that are sold overseas. That particular skilled labor is not easy to close a base down and move it somewhere else and rehire that particular skill set to repair them airplanes. So in my opinion, no, I think the base is here for a long time. Another question I got, do the water lines out there freeze? Will we not have water? No, they do not freeze. Um, they possibly could freeze under certain conditions, but in general, people's water lines do not freeze. There are a couple things that prevent against that. Your water line coming into the house is usually buried below the frost line. And number two, there's always water traveling through the line every time you use a tap in your house. So it doesn't get a chance to form an ice block. And number three, with the heat on in your house, then water lines will stay nice and warm. This question's come up a few times here. As we look at some homes, why do homes here have sump pumps in them? Well, in Utah, a lot of homes are built with basements. They're either dug four foot down or maybe eight foot down. This particularly applies to homes that are built west of the freeway. The water table is a little bit higher. So when they do the basement floors, they leave a hole for a sump pump to go in. So when the water comes up, instead of getting into your basement, it gets the sump pump takes it out to your yard. The time of year that you'll notice this the most will be in the springtime when the snow melts into the ground and then we get the rain water that usually makes the water table rise. There's a couple things you can do. Keep water away from the house. Have good downspouts. They have extension tubes that go on the downspouts that you just hook on that takes the water about 15 to 20 feet out into your yard. I usually put these on in the springtime when we have the most rainfall and then during the summertime and fall I leave, I leave them off I usually don't have a problem do these measures and you will not see any water typically in your basement another question I get a lot is what is secondary water so we have do, two different sources of water in a lot of cities not all cities have secondary water but some do so you have your culinary your drinking water that's plumbed into your house. You have secondary water that is actually plumbed on the outside of your house and it is designed to be used to water your yard or flower garden or a vegetable garden. A couple things about secondary water. You cannot drink secondary water. It is unfiltered and untreated water. It literally comes from the mountains straight down into that line system into your yard. So it can contain stuff that you may not want to drink. I've actually seen the canal, one of them, for the secondary water. And it's just a concrete canal that is open. So anything can get in there and travel down. It is not uncommon to have on your sprinkler system the filter get a little bit plugged because of some of the dirt and debris that is in the secondary system. It is a great source and a very economical way to water your grass. Common question I get, vehicle registration. I just had someone contact me. They've got a Dodge truck they currently register in California. They pay $800 a year to register it. What do you think it would cost in Utah, Mike? I don't have an exact number for you, but I can tell you that there's a couple different things of vehicle registration. One is property tax. So we have a flat fee system. It starts out with like the first three model years, like a 2020, 19, 2018, something like that and it's $150 and then it goes down in brackets all the way down to a low fee of probably 10, 20, 30 dollars for something that is 20 years old. Now on top of that you have the license plates fee also. So I would say if the car is within about three years old it's probably about 210, 220, approximately about one-fourth of what that person is currently paying in California. Check with the DMV office for an exact figure, but that's about what I pay on my vehicles. So in conclusion, I hope you found this video valuable. I answered some of your questions that you may have. If you do have more questions, by all means, reach out to me. I'm glad to answer them. If I don't have the answers, I'll try to find them for you. Take care. Stay safe. Shh.